Connor Bedard was finally drafted by the Chicago Blackhawks, and now it's time to do a 10 year rebuild with this team. The biggest issue we're going to run into is I have to start at the beginning of the season, so I have to try to get the first overall pick once again. And Chicago already got lucky enough to get it the first time, so I highly doubt we're getting it a second time. But then again, looking at this team, it really shouldn't be a difficult task to finish last in the entire league. It doesn't matter what happens in year number one, so we're assuming right to the end of the season and getting right into the draft lottery. But first, we're going to stop to the Stanley Cup playoffs as we're going to see the Toronto Maple Leafs taking down the Winnipeg Jets in five games, and the Vancouver Canucks also made the conference finals. So three of the four teams in the conference finals were Canadian teams. Good to see we're off to a realistic start. This time around with the draft lottery, Chicago's not going to be getting too lucky as they're dropping to the sixth overall pick. Meanwhile, Detroit's going to be getting the first overall pick via the Islanders. In the upcoming draft, we're going to have six selections, and our best prospects coming with the sixth overall pick as I'm going to be drafting Johnny Fawcett. I didn't make a handful of trades at the draft though, and that includes sending the 58th overall pick over to the Arizona Coyotes for two third rounders. And then I'm going to package up Tyler Johnson along with four third rounders over to the New Jersey Devils for Nemec. He's a good young defenseman, and he's definitely going to fit the timeline for this team, and I think that's a fantastic deal. We're going to make one more trade at the draft, and that's going to be sending the fifth overall pick and the seventh overall pick over to the Anaheim Ducks for a future third. Moving over to the re-sign phase, I'm going to be bringing Caleb Jones back on a three-year deal worth $2.75 million, and Kershev back on a three-year deal worth $1.6 million. Also during the offseason, I'm going to give Lucas Reichel an eight-year extension at $6.5 million. But now it's time to improve this team for the future, and I'm going to make a statement right now. This is not realistic whatsoever. A lot of the trades and signings I'm going to be making in today's video aren't realistic whatsoever. So Seth Jones and a fifth round pick over to the Carolina Hurricanes for Martin Natchez and Seth Jarvis. We're completely changing everything up. And then Natchez, I'm going to give you an eight-year extension at 8.5 million and Seth Jarvis an eight-year extension at 3 million. We're going to need someone to play in between the pipes for this team, so I'll give Varlamov a two-year deal at 4.5 million. We're going to continue making trades and this is going to be a massive deal for us. Taylor Radish, a second rounder, Joey Anderson, a seventh round pick over to the Anaheim Ducks for Jamie Drysdale, who just signed a five by five. Before we get into next season, we got to make a handful of signings here. So Barbashev, five years at 3.3 million. Max Pacioretty, one year at 3.6 million. Severson, five years at 4.9 million and patty kane welcome back to the chicago blackhawks on a one-year deal worth 7.6 million i'm basically bringing you back just to flip you at the trade deadline so after all those moves during the offseason the team's definitely looking better reichel natchez and patty kane are gonna be mounting that first offensive line for us looking at the defense we're still looking fairly weak here we got some good young pieces and jamie drysdale and nemec well in between the pipes for this team we'll worry about this situation in the offseason we just have to buy some time with varlamov at the trade deadline should be no surprise we're sitting outside of a playoff position with a 24 33 and 5 record so that means we got to make a few moves Although we're only making one move, it's going to be a big one. Patrick Kane and Patrick both 50% retained over to the Winnipeg Jets for Pierre-Luc Dubois, Nito Niederreiter, Mason Appleton, a third round pick and a fourth round pick. Niederreiter and Appleton are just being brought on to make the contracts work because I'm really going for Pierre-Luc Dubois on this deal. It really shouldn't be any surprise, but the Chicago Blackhawks are going to be finishing at the bottom of the league, 31st in the entire league to be exact, 34, 42, and 6. But there were a few bright spots on the team and one of them is going to be Martin Natchez as he's picking up 29 goals and 70 helpers for 99 points and he's leading the way for us. But in between the pipes, we're going to see Varlama pick up 31 wins with an 898 save percentage and a 344 goals against. To be fair though, I'm not really too worried with his numbers. Looking at the entire league, it shouldn't really be a surprise that Connor McDavid is going to be leading the way with 128 points, but coming in second, Patrick Kane, 60 goals and 59 assists for 119 points, and Pierre-Luc Dubois was all I could get for him. He posted a career high in points and all I could get was Pierre-Luc Dubois, and I also gave them Pacioretty. No, I think I got fleeced. In the postseason, we're going to see the Seattle Kraken matching up against the Florida Panthers, but Florida's going to be taking them down in a sweep, and somehow the Arizona Coyotes made it all the way to the conference finals. Ain't no way. Taking a look at the draft line, results things are going to be working out too well for Chicago as this team is going to be dropping from two to four and to make this even worse the projected number one overall pick has medium franchise potential but I really want to select this guy so we're going to make a move here Severson the fourth overall pick and the 23rd overall pick over to the Montreal Canadiens for the first they're accepting that deal so with the first overall pick we're bringing Abraham Darby onto the team outside of that selection we had four more picks but none of them are notable and we did make a few trades I'm going to package up the 65th and 66th overall pick over to the Arizona Coyotes for two future third round picks basically this was just an incredibly weak draft and I didn't want to waste our picks this year. Entering the re-sign phase, there's a few guys we gotta bring back. I'm signing Darby to his rookie contract. I'm also gonna be signing Fossett to his rookie deal. And then Dubois is gonna be coming in on a six-year deal worth $7 million. But it's enough messing around. It's time to enter free agency and we're making two massive moves. Right off the jump, Austin Matthews, a six-year deal at $15 million. I'm giving him more than he's asking because I gotta make sure he comes to this team. And our second major signing, that's gonna be Sorokin, three years at $8 million. And those are the two main signings we're doing in free agency. So here we are entering year three with the first line of Barbashev, Austin Matthews, and Martin Natchez, and on the second line, we got Lucas Reichel, Darby, and Jarvis, and on the third line, Fossett, Dubois, and Kurashev. The forward core we're building is actually looking pretty solid right now. Defensively, Jamie Dries is going to be the top guy here in an 87 overall, and we also have two other young guys in Korchinski and Nemec, so I think the defense on this team has a bright future. And in between the pipes, of course, we have Soroka, and he's our guy for the future. So, 30 games into this season, we're sitting around 500, and I got to make a move here. So, I'm going to be sending one of our prospects along with two second round picks and a seventh rounder over to the Anaheim Ducks for Minty Yukov. And after picking him up, we no longer need Caleb Jones, so I'm going to send him to the Florida Panthers for two 
two thirds. At the end of the year, the Chicago Blackhawks were seeing some massive improvement as they're finishing fifth in the Central Division with a 42, 33, and seven record, and we're also 16th in the entire league, and that means we're making the postseason. Austin Matthews is having a solid first season in Chicago, where he's picking up 49 goals and 47 helpers from 96 points. While Sorokin, he's picking up 33 wins with a 901 save percentage and a 305 goals against. Also, shout out to Alexander Ovechkin, he's finishing ninth in league scoring, and he picked up 65 goals. That doesn't even make sense. Our first postseason matchup definitely is going to be an easy one for us, as we have to take on the Colorado Avalanche. And although this series was going back and forth the entire way, it looks like Colorado is going to have our number as they're taking us down in Game 7, 4-3. to But the fact that we made it to Game 7 with this team against the Avalanche? Nah, this team's got a bright future. After beating the Chicago Blackhawks in the first round, the Colorado Avalanche are going to go on a run all the way to the Stanley Cup Final, where they're beating the Tampa Bay Lightning in six games. So are you telling me our Chicago Blackhawks team gave Colorado the toughest matchup? Next season, we're going ballistic, I can tell you that right now. And shout out to Pierre-Luc Dubois because he's leading us in the postseason with eight points in seven games. As the third line center, I'm definitely not complaining with those numbers. We are going to see one member of the Chicago Blackhawks taking home an award this season, and that's going to be Darby as he's taking home the Calder for Rookie of the Year. Once again, we're going to have a handful of picks in the upcoming draft, but the real moves that are being made are some trades. But right after saying that, I did draft a medium elite potential goaltender, so there's that. Now on to some trades. I'm going to be sending the 82nd overall pick along with the first round, Connor Murphy and two prospects over to the Buffalo Sabres for Hagos. He's a good young medium elite potential defenseman, and he's going to be a massive help to this team. The other moves that are being made is a fourth and a sixth rounder over to the Boston Bruins for a second rounder, and then a seventh rounder over to the San Jose Sharks for a future seventh. Now it's time to make a few signings and hand out a couple extensions. Nemec's getting seven years at 4.5 million, Kurashev's getting three years at 1.4 million, Minty Yukov's going to get seven years at 5.5 million. Right now, this seems like an awful contract, but four years down the road, this is going to be amazing for us. And then Hangos is going to get signed to his entry level contract. But right after saying he would be a big part of this team, I'm actually going to be flipping him over to the San Jose Sharks along with a seven for Hilland. Although Hilland has one less year on his contract, he's already up to an 87 overall. That's not going to be the only move of the offseason though, because I'm going to send Kurashev, Pinelli, and a fourth rounder over to the Arizona Coyotes for Brendan Yeager, and then I'm going to sign Chatfield to a two year deal at 1.75 million. And to finish off the offseason, I'm going to send a second rounder along with a prospect over to the New York Islanders for Wallstrom. I'm also giving Wallstrom a bag in the process as he's getting a four year extension of 5 million. So, with all the moves we've made in the development of our young players, this forward core is looking absolutely unstoppable. Currently, the only weakness for us is our fourth line, but even that's not terrible. Defensively, all the young guys continue to improve, and we're in a better spot than we were last season. And we still got Sorokin in between the pipes, and I know he can hold it down for us. But I didn't expect us to be this good because at the trade deadline, we're sitting with a 38, 18, and 5 record, second in the Central Division, and I think we have a chance at the Stanley Cup, so I better make a move. And ironically, with the move we're making, we're actually bringing Patrick Kane back onto the team. So he's coming back for his third stint with the Chicago Blackhawks. At the end of the season, the Chicago Blackhawks are officially back, second in the Central Division with a 53-23-6 record, we're second in the entire league, and now it's time for us to go win a Stanley Cup. Martin Natchez is going to be leading the way with 18 goals and 88 helpers for 106 points, with Sorokin, the numbers are looking better this season, 42 wins, 3 shots, an 897 save percentage at 321 goals against. The save percentage and goals against might not be looking the greatest, but I know this team's heading in the right direction. Okay, Ovi just picked up 73 goals at 40 years old. He also led the league in points with 108, but who cares about assists? 73 goals at 40 years old. This doesn't even make the slightest bit of sense, but who cares? So here we are in the postseason once again. It's time for this team to go on a run, and our first matchup is going to see us taking on the Winnipeg Jets. Winnipeg and Chicago are exchanging the first four games of this series, so here we are in game five, and we're entering overtime in a 3 3 tie. Halfway into overtime, Darby's bringing the puck into the offensive zone. He's going to get a shot off, but it's going to get blocked. The puck's deflecting right over to Fawcett, who's going to bury it in the back of the net, and Chicago is now one game away from the second round. But I have some bad news for the Chicago Blackhawks, as they're going to be dropping the next two games. Kyle Connor is going to bury the empty net to give Winnipeg game seven and we're falling in the first round once again. And what makes this even worse is Winnipeg's going to go on a run all the way to the Stanley Cup final and they're going to be taking it home, defeating the Toronto Maple Leafs in seven games. So that's back-to-back -back seasons now where we fall into the eventual Stanley Cup champions. We got to find a way to get over this hump. I guess you could say the move I made at the trade deadline was a pretty solid one for us as Patty Kane's leading us in postseason scoring with six goals and three assists for nine points. But Austin Matthews, one goal. I brought you here to play a 200-foot game and score goals and you were minus seven with one goal. Ain't no way you're letting me down like that. Also, show to the 20 2025, 2026 Vesna winner and Jordan Bennington. The St. Louis Blues are back and he's leading the way. Entering the draft, we have six selections and our best prospect is going to end up being a low elite potential defenseman. Now that we're in the offseason, it's time to give out some extensions. Darby, I'm going to give you a six year extension at 9.2 million. Hillen, five years at 7.1 million. Kevin Korczynski, five years at 5.2 million. And now it's time to make two massive free agent signings. We're going all in this season. Brad Marchand, one year at 7.5 million. And Joe Pavelski, one year at 5.5 million. In order to free up a bit of cap space for these guys, I'm going to send 
Wallstrom along with a third round pick back to the New York Islanders for Goldebrin. With all those extensions kicking in last season, this is the best our team's going to be looking. We have amazing forward talent from top to bottom. Defensively, we're probably one of the best in the entire league with Hill and Nemec leading the way. And we also got Jamie Drysdale holding it down that second pairing. And in between the pipes, we got Sorokin. Nah, this is our year. So I knew our Chicago team was good, but I didn't think we were this good. 60, 15, and 7, first in the entire league. We were averaging four goals a game, but only allowing 2.65. No one was even close to us. Austin Matthews is having an absolutely incredible season, picking up 60 goals and 49 assists for 109 points, while Sorokin's leading all goaltenders and wins with 46 while posting a 9-12 save percentage and a 273 goals against. So we've officially made it back to the postseason for the third year in a row. Although we've fallen in the first round the past two seasons, that's not the goal for us. We have to win a Stanley Cup. Our team's looking incredible right now, and I don't want this season to go to waste. We're going to be jumping into this series immediately as we're head to overtime in a 4-4 tie. Things aren't going to be looking good for the Chicago team in game one as Austin Matthews is going to be turning the puck over along the boards. Minnesota is going to show off some nice passing while fortifying Kirill Kaprizov who's going to bury the overtime winner. But after dropping game one, Chicago's locking in as they're going to be taking four of the next five and they're defeating the Minnesota Wild in a six game series. Moving on to the second round, I can guarantee this is going to be a tougher matchup for us because we have to take on the Colorado Avalanche. And keep in mind, they won the down the cup just two seasons ago. But it looks like the Colorado Avalanche are a bunch of frauds because in overtime in game four, Nemec's going to be scoring the OT winner and we're going to be completing the sweep over this team. Not going to lie, we better win a Stanley Cup now that we've swept the Colorado Avalanche. But now we have the Vancouver Canucks in the conference finals and if they've made it this far, they're definitely going to put up a fight. Well, I thought they would put up a fight, that's not exactly what's going to be happening because Chicago's going to be absolutely dominating them through five games and we're taking this one a five game series and we're off to the Stanley Cup final. So here we are in the Stanley Cup final, we have the Boston Bruins to take on and I'm going to jump into this series game by game game. The offense is going to be leading the way for Chicago in game one as we're picking up five goals. Once again in game two, it's going to be the offense leading the way as we're going to be picking up five goals once again. We have a 3-0 series lead. We've picked up 16 goals in the past three games. We're hoisting the Stanley Cup in game four. I take that back. We're hoisting the Stanley Cup in Game 5. Please don't blow a 3-0 series lead. And in Game 5 of this series, it looks like 5 is the lucky number for the Chicago Blackhawks as they're going to be taking the Boston Bruins down 5-2 and they're Stanley Cup champs. Leading us in the postseason is going to be Brendan Hill and as he's going to be taking home the Conn Smythe, picking up 3 goals and 14 assists for 17 points. The fact that I picked this guy up 2 off seasons ago and he just led to his Stanley Cup is incredible. So I think it's safe to say the difference maker in this series was taking Brad Marchand away from the Boston Bruins. Marchand's picking up 14 goals and 9 assists for 23 points, but if you check out Hill and at the bottom, him, he had two goals and 19 assists for 21 points. Those are definitely not the same numbers they showed on screen when he won the Conn Smythe. Also, shout out to Ilya Sorokin. I gotta give respect where respect is due. He held it down in between the pipes. A 915 save percentage and 282 goals against. I hope you're ready for another deep postseason run next year because we're looking to repeat. In the upcoming draft, we're only making five picks, but we are making a few moves. I'm gonna be shipping Lucas Reichel over to the Florida Panthers for a third and fourth rounder. This is basically a cap dump as I have to clear up some space. In the draft, we would make one notable selection, and that's in the fifth round where we're selecting a medium potential goaltender. With the money I freed up from Lucas Reichel, I'm able to bring back Sorokin on a three-year deal worth 7.8 million, and I'm also bringing back Stauber on a two-year deal worth 1.7. Now hear me out. I understand we just won the Stanley Cup, and I really shouldn't be changing this team up too much, but for 15.1 million, I feel like Austin Matthews isn't producing enough. Yeah, he's a 90 overall, and he's one of the highest in the game, but I just feel I can get more value for 15 million elsewhere. So I'm sending Austin Matthews over to the Columbus Blue Jackets for Cole Sillinger, Kent Johnson, Waka Bayshai, and Jiracek. We might be losing Austin Matthews, but we're also bringing in four elite players but only expect Johnson to be here for the one season because this dude wants 12 million per year for the next three years and I'm not giving him that. Another reason I made this move is I needed to free up some money for Fawcett so I'm giving him an eight year extension at 6.5 million and Jamie Drysdale he's getting five years at 8.3 million. I'm going to make another move to clear up some cap spaces. Pierre Luc Dubois just isn't worth 7.1 million so I'm going to ship him over to the Toronto Maple Leafs for Matthew Nyes in a third round pick. Before we get into next season I'm giving out two more extensions. Godolbin he's getting two years at 2.1 million and Jaeger's getting three years at 900k. Heading into next season, even with all the turnover during the offseason, I feel like we're in a pretty similar position. The forward core is looking great with four strong lines. Our defense is by far the best in the league as the lowest overall here is an 84 overall, and that's Pinty Yukov. But an 84 overall, I'm still paying him a reasonable price. And in between the pipes, we have a 91 overall Sorokin. Now, nah, real talk, it's time for us to repeat. When the season came to an end, we took a slight step back, but we're still looking amazing. Second in the entire league with a 53, 23, and 8 record. Kent Johnson's leading the way for us this season. He's picking up 23 goals and 75 helpers for 98 points, and also showed to Fawcett and Darby. With the loss of Austin, 
Austin Matthews, we needed a bit more goal scoring, and these two guys combined for 100 goals. Looking at goaltenders, once again, Sorokin's going to be leading all goaltenders in wins with 44, and he's also picking up an 899 save percentage and 289 goals against. Heading into the postseason, one thing's on everyone's mind, and that's a repeat, and we got the Winnipeg Jets in the first round, and the last time we took this team on in the first round, it didn't end too well for us, so let's get our revenge. In game number one, we're going to be heading into overtime after 60 minutes, as this game's tied 4-4, to four. but it wouldn't take long for us to find our winner. With Winnipeg on the power play, Mark Schaaf is going to be ripping a shot past Sorokin, and Winnipeg's taking game one. Chicago and Winnipeg are going to be exchanging the next three games, so we're entering game five with the series tied 2-2, to two, and this game's tied 4-4, four to four, so we need some overtime. With four minutes left in overtime, Kyle Connor's turning on the Jets as he's going to get to the loose puck first. He's sending the puck over to the slot where someone's going to tee it up, but the shot's getting blocked. Connor's retrieving that loose puck, and then he's making two nice moves, beating Sorokin, and Winnipeg's taking game five, and they're one game away from the second round. But as we know, this Chicago Blackhawks team produces a ton of offense, so we're headed to game seven after Chicago takes this one five to one. And then we reach game seven, and this is what happened. In the first period, Winnipeg scored six goals on us in the first period. They're going to go on to take this game eight to four, but ain't no way we just allowed six goals in one period. This team went out bad. They went out real bad. But after losing in the first round, it doesn't look like Winnipeg will be able to win the Stanley Cup this time around as their game began swept by the Colorado Avalanche in the second round. In the postseason, we had three guys tied for the team lead as Barbashev, Natchez, and Darby are all picking up three points. Heading into the upcoming draft, we had eight selections, but really there wasn't anyone notable other than this medium elite potential goaltender. So we've entered the re-sign phase and I've qualified both of these guys, but really we don't have the cap space to keep them here, so I gotta make a move. So the first one's gonna be sending Kent Johnson along with a seventh rounder over to the Pittsburgh Penguins for Michael Misa. He's on a three year deal with a six million dollar cap hit so that's going to be easy to add to the team and the other trade we're making is sending our other rfa along with a seventh round pick over to the seattle kraken for mcdonald he's still on his entry level deal for the next two years so that's going to be easy for us to afford before we get into next season i'm giving out one extension to jeer check five years at 5.3 million so here we are entering year seven i think we still have a pretty solid forward core the fourth line's taking a bit of a hit but i'm not too concerned as our top nine looks absolutely amazing our defense continues to look amazing so i'm not worried about that and sorokin although he's dropping two overalls this season he can still hold it down in between the pipes for this team. So I wasn't expecting this from the Chicago Blackhawks this season. They're bouncing back big time. 59, 19, and 4, first in the entire league. We were averaging 4.4 goals a game and only allowing 2.87. Last time this team had numbers like this, we won the Stanley Cup. Let's see if we can do it again. Even though he's a third line center on this team, Cole Sillinger is going to be leading the way with 30 goals and 63 assists for 93 points, and he was also plus 57. Our third line center just led us in points. We have to win a Stanley Cup if our third line center is leading the team in points. And also shout to Sorokin because for the third season in a row, he's leading all goaltenders and wins with 44 and he's got a 908 save percentage and 265 goals against so i'm expecting this team to make pretty quick work of the arizona coyotes and i'm focused on that second round matchup because we're either taking on the colorado avalanche or the winnipeg jets and those are two teams we always seem to struggle with so we're already down 1-0 in the series and now we're headed to overtime in game two things aren't off to a great start here late in double overtime michael meese is bringing the puck into the offensive zone he's going to send a saucer pass over to Fossett. somehow this puck's going to get in between both defenders and Fossett's going to bury this one in the back of the net and chicago's evened up this series and after taking that game two win, Chicago's going to dominate for the rest of the series as they're taking this one in five games and they're going to finish it off with a 7-2 win. Moving on to the second round, we all know this is going to be the toughest task for the Chicago Blackhawks, the Colorado Avalanche. Because without them in Winnipeg, Chicago has three Stanley Cups right now, maybe even four. So currently things aren't looking too good as we're already down 1-0 in the series and now we're headed to overtime in game two. So honestly, I don't know what's worse. The fact that we're losing game two and dropping 2-0 in the series, or the fact that I had to sit through three and a half overtimes just to get to this goal. And it's scored by Alex Nylander of all players. There's no way we lose to Alex Nylander, right? So you know what I haven't had enough of? Overtime. So let's head back to overtime in game three with this one tied three to three. So there's two positives that are coming from this game. One, Chicago's gonna be ending it early, so they're keeping themselves in this series. The second thing is Chicago ended this one early, and I don't have to sit through three and a half overtimes. And right after that win, when I thought Chicago gained a bit of momentum, everything's gonna fall apart, and the Colorado Avalanche are gonna be taking them down in a five-game series. After taking us down in five games, Colorado's gonna make it all the way to the Stanley Cup final, but they're gonna get swept by the Tampa Bay Lightning. When the games mattered most, Michael Meese is showing up and he's picking up 15 points in 10 games, so I definitely can't complain about what he did in the postseason. Also, Michael Bunting just finished third in postseason scoring with 28 points. He's on the Tampa Bay Lightning now. Okay then. I wasn't really expecting in the year 2029 to see Michael Bunting dominating the postseason. Chicago's going to have themselves a few award winners as McDonald's going to be taking home the Calder and Sorokin's going to be taking home the Vesna along with the William Jennings Award. In the upcoming draft, we have seven selections, but only two of them are going to be notable players. We're going to select one medium elite potential right winger and then a low elite potential defenseman. Moving on to the re-sign phase in free agency, Stauber's coming back on a two-year deal worth 900k while mcdonald's gonna be getting an eight-year extension at 6.7 million so we gotta free up a little bit of cap space as long as bring some more players in so i'm packaging up Sillinger along with two prospects over to the san jose sharks for cavallo and Whittaker. after
after acquiring these two players, Cavallo is going to get a six year extension at 5.1 million. Right after that, I'm sending Doc over to the Colorado Avalanche to free up 1.5 million, and then Whittaker is getting a five year extension at 4.1 million. Although the forward core is taking a bit of a hit losing Sillinger, we added two more pieces, so we got a bit more depth. Defensively, this team's still looking absolutely elite, and goaltending, I'm never going to worry about that. When the season came to an end, the Blackhawks are dominating like usual 56, 22, and 4, first in the entire league, but we were scoring 4.62 goals per game. That's absolutely ridiculous. And when you look at the goal scoring numbers on this team, no, it's unreal. There's countless 20 goal scorers here, and McDonald's, he's even picking up 64 goals. Also, we had eight guys over 70 points, and Hillen was just shy by three points. And like usual, Sorokin's going to be leading the entire league in wins with 49, an 899 save percentage, and 290 goals against. We can definitely live with those numbers. And shout out to Alex Texier. At 30 years old, he's finishing eighth in league scoring. Just the most random player to be finishing eighth in league scoring. In the postseason, we're going to see a familiar foe in the first round as we're going to be taking on the Winnipeg Jets. And who would have seen this one coming? In a seven game series, we're going to be falling in the first round to the Winnipeg Jets after finishing first in the entire league, averaging 4.6 goals per game. I'm convinced as long as we don't have to take on Colorado or Winnipeg, we're winning a Stanley Cup, but we always seem to take on one of them. And who's making it all the way to the conference finals? The Colorado Avalanche, and they're beating the Winnipeg Jets. Edmonton would beat Colorado and go on to win the Stanley Cup, but that's neither here nor there. If we can avoid those two teams, we're winning countless Stanley Cups. We are going to have one award winner this season. That's going to be McDonald's as he's taking home the Maurice Rocket Richard Trophy. Once again, in the upcoming draft, we're going to have seven selections, and our best player is going to be a medium elite potential goaltender. We're entering our second and last offseason, and Kozlov's going to be our first move here as I'm going to bring him back on a two year extension worth 800K. He's the medium elite potential goaltender we drafted a handful of years ago. He's up to a 74 overall, so he might be able to be our backup next season. And who's he going to be backing up next season? Well, more than likely, it's going to be Spencer Knight as we're bringing him in through a trade. We end up losing Sorokin in free agency, and I think Knight can definitely fill that void for us. There's still a handful of moves we need to make before we get into next season, though. Jaeger, I'm going to give you a three year extension at 1.4 million, and then we're making a massive deal which involves Minty Yukov, two third rounders, and two prospects. I'm going to send that package over to the Seattle Kraken for Emmerich and Allen. Allen's going to be getting a massive eight year deal at 3.1 million while well, Emmerich's getting an eight-year deal as well, but this one's at 4.3 million. So we've officially reached season nine and we've only won one Stanley Cup so far. Honestly, that's completely ridiculous with the amount of talent we have on this team. We constantly finish first in the entire league, but somehow we always fold in the playoffs. Right before we simulate this season though, Van Allen's going to be getting an eight-year extension at 2.8 million. So right after I was talking about how we've been constantly finishing first in the entire league, we're dropping to third in the entire league. Not gonna lie, that statement aged incredibly poorly. The scoring on this team is definitely going to be taking a step back this season, but Darby's still going to be leading the way with 85 points. Well, Spencer Knight, it was a pretty good first campaign from him in Chicago. 41 wins with a 907 save percentage and 278 goals against. All right, there is a slight possibility that we don't have to face either the Colorado Avalanche or the Winnipeg Jets. As long as Minnesota and Edmonton both win, we're winning a Stanley Cup and it's not even going to be an issue for us. And you know who else is going to be an issue? The Calgary Flames, because we're going to dominate them the entire series and we're taking them out in five games. Thank you, Minnesota. You've done God's work taking down the Colorado Avalanche. So now it's time for us to smoke you. And that's exactly what's happening because we're going to be taking them out in a clean sweep. Now we just have to pray that Anaheim defeats the Winnipeg Jets. The Anaheim Ducks are officially my second favorite team now. They took down the Winnipeg Jets in six games. Guys, we're making the Stanley Cup final. All right, I know it's been kind of a running meme that Colorado and Winnipeg have been dominating us this entire video, but we just swept the Anaheim Ducks and now we're reaching the Stanley Cup final. Maybe Colorado and Winnipeg actually did have our number. So after back-to-back -back sweeps, here we are in the Stanley Cup final. So far, we've lost one game in the playoffs, and I don't plan on losing four in this series, so let's go win ourselves another Stanley Cup. At one point in this game, the Buffalo Sabres had a 3-1 lead, but Chicago's gonna change that as they're gonna be picking up five unanswered, and they're taking home the Stanley Cup in a five-game series. So that means we just went 16 and two in the playoffs. Nah, this Chicago team might go down as one of the greatest of all time. Similar to the last time we won a Stanley Cup, Brendan Hillen's going to be leading the way as he's going to be taking home the Conn Smythe. Nah, but real talk, I think we need to talk about how dominant the Chicago Blackhawks team just was. Starting the playoffs off with a five-game series in the first round, then completing back-to-back -back sweeps before finishing the playoffs off with another five-game series. Nah, this team was just built different. Although Darby's finishing with the most points on the team, nobody really led us because we just had such even scoring throughout the entire lineup. Meanwhile, in between the pipes, Spencer Knight, incredible numbers. 16 wins, 3 shots, a 934 save percentage, and a 202 goals against. Look at the goals against and save percentages of all the other goalies in the postseason. Spencer Knight was just on a different level. So we're entering year 10 of the rebuild, and this is the final draft we're going to be going to, but surprisingly, this is actually going to be our best draft. We're bringing in a medium elite potential defenseman, a medium elite potential goaltender, another medium elite potential goaltender, and then a low elite potential defenseman. But the final two picks we did have, I packaged them up and sent them over to the Calgary Flames for a future third rounder. Now there's one thing we have to remember. This is the final year of the 
rebuild. So everything that happens after this season and for the future doesn't matter. We don't have too much cap space, but I really want to improve this team. So we're making a lot of moves here. I'm going to send Allen along with a prospect over to the New Jersey Devils for Hentinen. And then I'm going to package up two medium elite potential prospects along with a first rounder over to the Florida Panthers for Lamore. After that move, I'm packaging up Emmerich, a first round pick, and then two more medium elite potential players over to the New Jersey Devils for another medium elite potential player that's already developed. By clearing up some of that cap space, I'm able to bring Michael Misa back on a seven year deal worth 9.7 million. And then this is our team heading into our final year. The lowest overall center on our team currently is an 88 overall, and our lowest overall left winger is an 85 overall. We're going to ignore Johansson on that fourth line, but right now, this forward core is going to be unstoppable. Our defense is going to be looking almost identical to last season, so you already know that's elite. And in between the pipes, we got Spencer Knight, and we already know what he can do. Also, I just wanted to show this cap situation. Imagine having to re sign all of these players for next season. This team would be cooked. At the end of the year, nobody can compete with the Chicago Blackhawks. 64, 8, and 10. We were averaging 4.7 goals per game and 2.62 goals allowed per game. We're by far the best offensive and defensive team in the league, so there's no reason we shouldn't be hoisting the Stanley Cup this season. The face of the franchise in Darby is once again going to be leading the team in points. He's picking up 45 goals and 45 helpers for 90 points, while Spencer Knight, 51 wins, a 908 save percentage, and 267 goals against. Let's go get ourselves another Stanley Cup. And to make this season even better, who's not making the playoffs this time around? The Winnipeg Jets. So the only team we have to worry about is the Colorado Avalanche. But this LA Kings team is currently competing with this dominant Blackhawks team, and we're headed into overtime in game number one. Early into overtime, I don't even know what Darby's doing here. He's circling back, and then he's going to throw the puck towards the front of the net. It's going to deflect off our goaltender, and then LA is going to bury this one in the back of the net, and they're taking game one. After taking game one, LA's taking that momentum into game two, and now they have a 2 0 series lead. But I already know my Chicago Blackhawks team is going to be bouncing back. All right, we're down 3 0 in the series. We just won 64 games and allowed five unanswered. I refuse to allow this team to get swept in the first round. Things weren't looking too great in game four, but luckily four and answer from the Blackhawks is going to be keeping them in this series. In game five, it looks like the offense is starting to pick up as we're going to be stealing this game away as well. And now we're officially back in this series. But early into game six, things aren't looking good. We're down 4-1 heading into the final period. And I think it might be wraps for the Chicago Blackhawks. But hold on because the offense is waking up. We're going to be scoring three on answer before Sackick picks up a goal to give Ellie the lead once again. So we're entering the final three minutes in a one goal game. In the final minute of this game, when it seemed like it was all over for the Chicago Blackhawks, Whittaker's going to be scoring a crucial goal with only 45 seconds left and Chicago's evening up this game and we're off to overtime. So we're going to go to overtime, right? We're not going to fold this in the final 40 seconds, are we? There's no way we're going to possibly do that. And on the final face-off of the game, the Chicago Blackhawks are going to be falling in six games in the first round after winning 64 games during the regular season. So this is what it feels like to be a Boston Bruin fan. Not going to lie, you guys took losing that series to Florida a lot better than I'm taking it right now because I'm ready to break controllers. I'm not feeling too happy right now. Not happy at all. 